Your child's brain doesn't just hear words and forgets them. It records it and over time lines like, look how well your sister studies or why can't you be more like your brother literally rewires them. And I know you don't mean harm when you compare your child to your sibling or their friends or anyone else, but those small moments quietly reshape how your child's brain learns to seek love for the rest of their life. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Dr. Arif Khan, pediatric neurologist in Dubai and founder of Neuropedia, the region's first comprehensive pediatric neuroscience center. In this video, I'm going to show you what comparing children actually does to their developing brain. The three types of comparison brains I see in my practice, and most importantly, how to replace comparison with something that actually helps your kids thrive. In my years as a pediatric neurologist, I have seen something fascinating. Children don't just grow in height and weight, they grow in self-definition. Between ages 3 and 12, a child's brain is in a critical period of identity formation. During this time, every interaction, every word, every comparison teaches their brain a fundamental question. What must I do to feel loved? And here's what happens neurologically. When a child hears, why aren't you like your sibling? Their brain releases cortisol. That's our stress hormone. But more importantly, it triggers their attachment system. Now, the attachment system is asking, am I still safe? Am I still loved? And over time, repeat comparisons don't just cause stress, they create a neural pattern. The brain starts linking love with performance, with being someone else, with constant evaluation. Research has found that children who grow up with frequent comparisons show altered activity in their prefrontal cortex, the part of the brain responsible for self-identity and decision-making. Translation, these children spend their adult lives making decisions based not on who they are, but on who they think they should be to earn love. In my practice, I've observed three three distinct patterns in how children's brain adapt to chronic comparison. Let me introduce you to them. The first is the affectionate ones. These are the children who learn that achievement equals affection. Here's what's happening. Every time they succeed, good grades or winning a competition, being better than their sibling, their brain gets a dopamine hit. But it's not the dopamine of genuine pride. It's the dopamine of relief. Over time, the brain creates a dangerous equation. Love equals performance. Research has also tracked these children into adulthood and found they're more likely to experience burnout, perfectionism, and what researchers call conditional self-worth. They become adults who can't rest, who fear mediocrity, and who collapse when they're not at their best. The second pattern, I call it the peacekeeper brain. These children notice conflict or disappointment faster than anyone else. So they adapt. They make themselves smaller, quieter, and easier. What's remarkable is that the brain scans of these children show heightened activity in the anterior cingulate cortex. That's the part of the brain that monitors social threats and rejection. The brain is constantly scanning. Am I enough? Will I disappoint them? Should I hide this part of myself? They grow up to be adults who people please, who suppress their own needs, who struggle to say no, who avoid confrontation at all costs. Because their childhood brain learned that love requires making myself invisible. And then then there's the invisible brain. These children aren't top performers or troublemakers. They simply go unnoticed. Maybe they're the middle child. Maybe they're just quieter than their siblings. A lack of consistent validation during childhood creates something called learned invisibility. These children's brains actually show reduced activation in the ventral striatum. That's the brain's reward center when they receive praise or attention because they've learned not to expect it. They grow up believing they must learn attention by being extraordinary. Or sometimes they, they just withdraw completely, believing love isn't meant for them. What's heartbreaking is that none of this happens because parents are bad. It happens because comparison feels like motivation. You see one child excelling and think, maybe this will inspire the other one. But here's what the brain reads. I'm safe only when I'm like them. In fact, a study found that sibling comparison was the single strongest predictor of adult anxiety disorders. Stronger than divorce, stronger than economic hardships, and stronger than almost any other childhood factor. But damaging children children's brains for literally no benefit. So what can you do instead? Comparison thrives in silence, but connection thrives in specificity. Here are three scientifically backed strategies. First one I called as individual recognition. Instead of saying, you're not like your brother. Try, I love how thoughtful you are when you solve problems. The brain remembers specific recognition. It anchors identity not in comparison, but in genuine acknowledgement. The second strategy is effort over outcome. Instead of, why can't you get grades like your sister? Try, I notice how hard you worked on that project. Tell me a little bit more about your process. Praising effort rather than outcomes creates children with growth mindset. They become resilient, not fragile. And last one, the one-on-one -on -one time. Spend in 
individual time with each child every 15 minutes a week where they have your undivided attention. Children who receive regular one-on-one -on -one attention from parents show lower cortisol levels and significantly better emotional regulation because their brain learns, I don't have to compete for love, it's already mine. Every child is wired differently, different strengths, different challenges and different timelines. Our job as parents isn't to rank them, it's to help each of them feel seen for who they actually are. If you found this helpful, you would love watching how screen time is the same as alcohol in this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.